Alright, this is a mechanical ventilation lab activity, PB840, week 3. Uh, the purpose of activities is introduction to the PB840 ventilator. Place a circuit with a heat and moisture exchanger and ballard inline closed system suction catheter on the PB840 and describe how to turn on the ventilator and input settings. Equipment needed would be the PB840. A 50 PSI air hose and a 50 PSI O2 hose. So the black one there is the air and the green one is the O2 hose. You also need a Y connector for compressed air outlet. That is your Y connector. Yep, that is your Y connector. That is connected to the inhalation and exhalation tubing. You also need a circuit. Use HME and inline closed suction system. So this is your closed Ballard suction line system. Also a test lung and a mouthpiece. So this is our test lung and the mouthpiece. All right, so the PB840, you want to just skip to the steps? Or just, all right, the PB840 ventilator can be used on neonates, pediatrics, and adult patients. When using the ventilator on neonates and small pediatrics, a different circuit is used. The PB840 is electrically powered, although an internal battery can run the ventilator for a short period of time. There is an internal oxygen analyzer that measures the actual fraction of inspired O2. The PB840 requires 50 PSI air and 50 PSI O2 to power the gas flow. However, this ventilator has an air compressor that will generate 50 PSI air. It is the big box that occupies the lower part of the ventilator. So if you can take a look there, the bottom of the ventilator, that is the box that we are speaking of. So if you do not have an air outlet, this ventilator will work without that. of the temperature sensing port, which is this. So our inhalation goes there. Exhalation goes there. This finger tubing up there. We have our closed suction valley on there. Power switch. So turn the turn the back on. Ready to start reading again. 
Get up on, on the screen. All right, the ventilator lets you know what to do next by giving your prompts in the lower right hand corner of the street. Select new patient setup by touching the screen. Enter the approximate ideal body weight for an adult patient. First touch the IBW button. You will notice it turns to the color of sand. This indicates that the ventilator is waiting for you to make a change. To change the perimeters, turn the wheel located on the front right of the ventilator, enter 70 kilograms, which is an average ideal body weight for adults. All right, you will notice, or well, if you have a patient at the hospital who's being placed back on the ventilator, you will choose same patient instead of choosing new patient. You will notice the bottom portion of the ventilator screen is labeled new patient setup. You will select the choices as outlined below. Mode, touch this, then you will see four different selections. Set, set the mode to AC mode. Second, mandatory type, press this and you will see three selections. Oh yeah, choose pressure for her. And then press continue to go to the next screen. All right, so F, here is where you select the rate in breaths per minute that will be delivered to the patient. So set that to 14. So we will set it to 14. This is how fast the air will go into the patient's lung. It is called peak flow rate. So this is this is I time since we're on the the uh, BC plus setting. It's going to be I time instead of B max. Mm -hmm. So we set it for one second. Our plateau down here. Mm -hmm. It's going to stay at zero. Okay, this doesn't have ramp or square because of the setting. BC plus doesn't have um, plateau or ramp or setting. Mm -hmm. Ramp or square. Okay. So rise, rise time. time. We're going to have at 20%. Okay. This. That's the pressure sensitivity. Yes. And that's negative 1.5. You will see it as 1.5, but pretend that there is a negative there. This is our FiO2. We're going to set it to 21%. Room air. Mm -hmm. And the PEEP, we're going to keep it at zero. So we don't want any PEEP on this song. Now we can press accept right there. 
That'll start our settings. Yes. Now we could set up our test log on it. So we have our settings here. The vent settings we could change. The apnea settings. So if the patient does not take a breath for 20 or more seconds, the ventilator will alarm and begin ventilating the patient with the apnea settings. And then our alarm settings we're going to set here. Mm -hmm. So our high pressure alarm, we're going to set it at 35. Our high respiratory rate, which is our F total, we're going to set it at 25. Mm -hmm. Okay, our low and high minute volume, right here, we're going to set our low to 3 liters, so we're going to set our high to 9 liters, our high and low tidal volume, we're going to set our this is mandatory, mandated, mm -hmm. and this is our spontaneous. We're going to set them both low to 200, high to 700. This, the high follows together, so we just need to set the low here to 200. So we accepted those changes. Mm -hmm. I see all the alarms went off because the vet, the settings are accurate. So we have these buttons here. Increase oxygen for two minutes. If we hit that, it's going to deliver two minutes of 100% oxygen to, to the patient. And that's used for prior to suctioning or if you need to, to um, pre-oxygenate for any reason. Manual inspiration, if you look at the graph, when you hit manual inspiration, it's going to deliver a breath. Mm -hmm. So when we hit our inspiratory pause, it's going to give us a reading. This is our plateau pressure. It's at 26 centimeters of water. And we hit unfreeze here to go back to our normal graph. When we hit expiratory pause, we're going to be able to see our um, peep. So here, it's a 0.8 centimeters of water. And this is our intrinsic peep, which is at zero. It shows us that we have a peep of 0.8, but we actually have a setting here at zero, so the, the machine is 
um, just given a point made of heat. Yeah. And then again, unfreeze. And we'll see the. No, we could, um, we could take it off the Tesla. Oh, that was it, right? Yeah, hold on. We're gonna, we're gonna try it on the actual. Mm. So we're, we're actually gonna have to change this because it's not gonna be invasive anymore. We're gonna be non invasive. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna pause the alarm because it's gonna go off when we disconnect the circuit. So we're actually going to have to change the settings here. So we have to change these values to match my breathing so that we don't get continuous alarms. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the graph, It's delivering multiple breaths because it, it detects small pressure changes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 